no idea how to shoot dark and moody food photos, I'm going to share five tips so that you can easily start photographing food in a dark and moody style. Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, the best place for food bloggers, photographers, and content creators to improve their food photography and make money from it. So today's video is all about how you can nail a dark and moody photo. I'll be sharing my top five tips that will easily help you to master this popular style of food photography, even if you've never shot a dark moody photo before. So if you're interested in nailing this type of food photography, then keep watching because I've saved the best for last. Tip number five is my favorite. So make sure you stay until the end of this video to catch it. Okay, let's dive in straight away. So the first tip I have for you is when you're planning on shooting a dark and moody style, you want to ensure that all the props and backgrounds that you're using for that particular shoot are also dark. When you use props that are dark in color, this will help your props blend into the background, which should also be dark by the way. So when you have dark props and dark backgrounds, the only thing that's really standing out and creating contrast in your image is your hero food item. And that's exactly the result you're looking for. So if you take a look at this example of cake that I've shot for a client, you can clearly see that the background is dark and all the props that I've used in the shot, such as the cake stand, the stack of plates on the left, as well as the cake knife, again, are all dark in color. And this really helps for the props to blend into the background and blend into the shadows. And it makes that hero food, the actual cake, stand out by creating contrast. Now, had I used a lighter cake stand, such as perhaps maybe a white cake stand, or maybe a white stack of plates, the contrast between the dark and the light would have been too great here. And my eyes would have gone to that stack of white plates, as that's what would have stood out. So using darker colored props and backgrounds just ensures that your set is absorbing any extra light rather than reflecting it back and making your images look brighter. Now, my second tip when shooting a dark moody photograph is to use black flags or black reflectors or any other blocking tool to help cut down the amount of light. The less ambient light you have around your set, the darker and moodier your image is going to be. And you can clearly see that in this set of images that I took of pancakes. So the first image was taken without any blocking tools in place, and you can clearly see that the background is well exposed and the lighting is kind of pretty even throughout the image. Now for the second image, I used various blocking tools around my set to create a vignette around the pancakes. And I was very strategic about where I placed these blocking tools in order to cut down the light in the background as well as the foreground. You always want to make sure that you still have light hitting your hero food though. So even though I've used these blocking tools to create an overall darker and moodier image, the pancakes are still well exposed. What you don't want is an overall dark image where even your hero food is dark and underexposed. Okay, let's move on to tip number three. Now, this is one of my favorite tips and it's highly underutilized when it comes to food photography. And that is to incorporate highlights or more specifically, specular highlights. So what exactly is a specular highlight? A specular highlight is basically like a bright spot of light that appears on anything that's shiny in your image. So when you're thinking about food, anything that has a glaze, maybe something oily, or perhaps even cutlery that's shiny, that will reflect light. And that reflection is called a specular highlight. Now these can be really effective in dark moody images because your overall photo is quite dark and therefore your eyes are really drawn to anything that's bright in the image, right? So any bright spots that are on your food are going to stand out. So if you have a look at this example of donuts that I shot, the image has pretty deep and dark shadows and the color of the food is pretty dark and so are the props. But the brightest part of the image is definitely the highlight that you're getting from the chocolate glaze. So definitely try and incorporate specular highlights when shooting dark and moody images. An easy way to achieve specular highlights is lightly brushing your food with a little bit of oil so that the light can reflect off of those areas. Okay, on to tip number four, and that is use a tripod when shooting dark moody photos. Now, when you're trying to build shadows around your food, and especially when you're using blocking tools such as flags, the amount of light that's on your set is quite low. 
So if you're using natural light, you're going to need a longer shutter speed to make sure that your images and your hero food is still well exposed. And if you've got a low shutter speed, you want to make sure that your camera is set up on a tripod in order to capture tack sharp images. Now, I always save the best for last. So the last tip, tip number five that I have for you when shooting dark moody photos is to think about how you can creatively edit these images in Lightroom. So post-production is such a great way to add your creative stamp to an image. And there are so many tools available to us food photographers in Lightroom that can really help to achieve that dark moody look we want. So one of my favorite ways to do this is to use the local adjustment filters that are available within Lightroom. So here's a shot of granola that I took a few weeks ago using artificial light. And you can see that in the original image, I've got some really nice deep dark shadows. Overall, I've used a dark background and this could easily be classed as a dark moody shot. Now here's the exact same image with the addition of a radial filter in Lightroom. Using the radial filter really helps me to darken up the background, create a vignette around my food, and it really helps to put the focus on the granola and just blur out that background. So you can see what a big difference post-production can make when creating dark, moody food photos. So again, here's a quick before and then a quick after to just show you what the difference can be when you use these local adjustment tools within post-production. And there you have it, my top five tips for dark moody photos. So whether that's using props that are dark in color, using blocking tools to reduce the ambient light around your set, creating specular highlights so that the focus is on the food, using a tripod to ensure that you have razor sharp photos when your ambient light levels are low, as well as using local adjustment tools to really enhance the dark moodiness of your images. So really you can use these tips individually or combine all of them together to help you achieve this effect. So now that you know my favorite five tips for dark and moody photos, I want you to comment below and tell me which one you'll be using for your next dark and moody shoot. Now, if you enjoyed the tips that I've given you today, you are going to love my 18 lessons guide on how to level up your food photography. This is a free guide that I've created just for you so you can start making improvements and start monetizing and making money from your food photos. The link to download is in the description box as well as the comment box below. Now, I'm gonna be back next week with a new video all about my top lighting techniques that every food photographer and blogger needs to know about. So make sure you like and subscribe to keep up to date with any of my new videos. Until then, have a great week and see you next week.